Harold Landry and the outside linebackers coming at you right after the bumper. What's good guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to be switching up the concept a little bit. Uh, listen to you guys' feedback. I'm trying to fix the focus on the camera, so hopefully that's a little bit better. I'm trying to fix that audio. Uh, I've been having a little static issue with the microphone, so let me know how that's going as well. Uh, I'm going to try to fix it as much as I can, guys. And we're trying to take this YouTube channel from good to great, just like the boys. So today we're going to be breaking down the outside linebackers. I got a prediction that we're going to keep five on the roster, and I don't think that's going out on a limb. Uh, starting with Harold Landry, then we got Cameron Wake, Sharif Finch, Kamale Correa, and DeAndre Walker. So we're going to hop right into it, guys, covering Harold Landry. All right, guys, Harold Landry coming to his sophomore year out of Boston College. We picked him up at the beginning of the second round. We actually traded up to get him. So that tells you what the Titans really think about him. And his pro comp coming out of college was Vaughn Miller. So that tells you about his upside and how explosive he could be. So he played 57% of the total snaps last year for us. And look for that to increase that 75, 85% uh, role for us. I believe he's going to be the one cornerstone starter as far as outside linebackers go. The other side is going to be more of a rotational piece with him just coming off the field to kind of catch a breather here and there. So we know he finished with four and a half sacks for us last year and it could have definitely been more. He had that high ankle sprain to start the year. So if anybody's had that, we know it takes a couple weeks, a couple months to fully recover from that. So just coming in week one already hurt kind of hindered him in the beginning. But we know he's added on a little bit of uh, poundage this year, got a little bit bigger, which is good because he was uh, in that 250-ish range, which isn't bad, isn't small, but we would like to add a little bit of muscle on top. He has a very decent frame to add on top. He's got long arms, and I see a very high upside for him, going from four and a half sacks last year up into that 10 plus range this year is what I predict. But next, let's go ahead and hop into Cameron Wake. All right, guys, next let's talk about Superman. Let's talk about Cameron Wake. Coming into his 11th total season in the league, he's 37 years old, so he's up there in age, but we believe he might still have some tread left on the tires, and I think he's still going to be better than Arakpo or Morgan was for us last year. He finished with six total snaps, only playing 47% of the total snaps for Miami last year. So he's already got 98 career sacks. This is a man that's had 15 and 14 total sacks in a season. So if he can even give us a little bit of that and still get in that 7 to 10 range, that's going to absolutely be amazing for us. He's a little bit bigger, so he also has that, that uh, ability to probably bump in just a little bit and then have another Harold Landry Correa, somebody out on the outside to rush outside. He can come in between the guard and the tackle or the tackle and the tight end, whatever it might be. But I believe that's a very good signing for us in free agency, and he's going to fill a big world for us this year. Next, let's go ahead. Let's hop into Kamale Correa. All right, guys. Next, we got Kamale Correa. So, former high school teammate to Marcus Mariota. We know we acquired him from Baltimore last year, where he was with Dean Pease for a couple years. They drafted him in the second round. He never really started for them, never really had any stats of any type. He had one big blow-up game, and that was really it against Chicago. But we acquired him last year. He played 31% of the snaps for us, and he actually did a really decent job. Uh, he's a little slightly undersized. Uh, most of us around 250. He's around that 240 range. And he's not super athletic. He ran a 4.69 and the 40, which is not blazing by any means. So he runs with the flat foot a little bit of the time, but he does excellent work with his hands. So even being a little smaller as far as the outside linebackers go, I think he's going to find a big piece in the rotational spots. And I think he's going to be in there on that first and second down range a lot. And he's going to be pretty decent against the run. He actually caves in quite well. He doesn't let him get flanked. Uh, I would like to see a little bit more strength from him in his upper body, just getting off blocks, but he fights well with his hands. And I think he's gonna be a big part for our defense this upcoming year. Well, let's go ahead. Let's hop into Sharif Finch next. All right, guys, next we got Sharif Finch, an undrafted free agent out of Temple Forest last year. He finished with the eight and a half sacks 
for his senior year over at Temple. He came in, he got one and a half for us last year, played 20% of the snaps. Uh, coming out of college, there just wasn't a lot of outlook for him. Nobody was really looking at him. And he came in and played well. He's got pretty ideal size. He's 6'3", 250. Arn Leith is good. He does kind of lack that upper body strength you would like to see from him getting off of blocks. But overall, his outlook's pretty good. As long as Dean Pease and Frabel keep working with him, he's going to be a key rotational piece for us this upcoming season. But next, let's go ahead. Let's hop into Gian. All right, guys, next we got our fifth round pick, DeAndre Walker, coming out of Georgia. Cliff notes on him is he has pretty ideal size, good arm length, and he's explosive. The cons are, though, he's pretty inexperienced, he's inconsistent at times, and he just doesn't have that knack to find the football. But I believe those are all things that Dean Pease and Mike Vrabel can work with him and develop him a year or two. And down the line, he'll find his way into a key rotational piece, or he could potentially be a starter for us. It just kind of could go either way at this point. His floor is pretty low, but his ceiling's pretty high. He has the traits for it, though. Uh, he has a very good straight line speed. His lateral quickness could be worked on a little bit, I believe, and we'd like to see a little bit more upper body strength from him. But coming into this upcoming season, it's going to be more just a red shirt season. And going forward, he's definitely going to stick on the roster. We spent a fifth round pick on him. There's no way that they're going to cut him, I believe. But next, I'm going to give you guys a little bonus. We're going to hop into Rashawn Evans. All right, guys, I know what you guys are saying. Rashawn Evans, he's not an outside linebacker. He's a middle linebacker for us. And you guys are correct. But I don't believe that's why we drafted him in the first round last year. I believe we drafted him for his versatilities. And Dean Pease wants to move him all over the defense. And I believe he's going to be a big part of that. So we know last year he had that big hamstring injury coming into the year. And I believe that hindered his offseason progression quite a bit. He's got the full offseason this year. I believe they're going to be able to make different implements. And we're going to see packages that have Jayon Woodyard, him in there with Jarrell, uh, Cam Wake, Landry, whoever it might be. And they're just going to move them all up and down that line. And that's going to keep the offense guessing. And that's where we're going to see a big increase in sacks this upcoming season. All right, guys, in conclusion, I believe those are the five we're going to keep. Excluding Rashawn Evans, we're going to be listed as a middle linebacker for sure. But this upcoming season, I believe we're going to be around that 50 to 51 total sack range. We finished with 39 last year, and that's with two of our outside linebacker starters finishing with two sacks in between the two of them. So I believe we're going to be up there, and we're going to be in that top five in total sacks this upcoming season. But let me know what you guys think down below, guys. I know we kind of switched up the concept this time. Let me know what you think about the highlight videos, if the camera's looking better, if the sound's sounding better. Let me know, guys. We've got to take this, this YouTube channel from good to great, and I can't do it without you guys. But we'll see you tomorrow.